begin with aortic stenosis. Okay, so this we'll refer to a few times. How's the patient feeling? Walk into the door, and your patient tells you, well, I gave you that patient earlier that was 32 years of age with aortic stenosis. Hmm. How is it possible that a 32-year-old is having aortic stenosis? How is it possible that the aortic valve has already undergone so much damage that it's now accumulating dystrophic calcification? Remember calcification? In basic pathology, we talked about the differences between dystrophic calcification and metastatic calcification. You've done that plenty of times. What's the difference? Dystrophic calcification would be damage D, dystrophic D, damaged tissue occurs first. Where is the damaged tissue here? The aortic valve. So you have normal amounts of calcium, normal amounts of calcium that deposits on damaged tissue. Resulting in, well, what kind of characteristic would calcium then give that tissue when it starts accumulating? Rigid, hard. So now we have an aortic valve which is hardened due to dystrophic calcification, but still doesn't answer the question, why a 32-year-old? Why a 32-year-old? Because now your patient might have been only born with how many cusps of the aortic valve? Uno, dos. Only two. How many should it normally have? Remember, every single valve in the heart, except the, oh, let me think about that. Oh, the bicuspid <laughs> has three, three cusps. So now the aortic valve only has two. That's congenital bicuspid disease, resulting in early dystrophic calcification. This patient, 32 of year, years of age, young, is having fatigue and tiredness upon exertion. If there is enough muscle buildup, a concentric hypertrophy of the left ventricular wall may result in angina, maybe even chest pain upon exertion. Are you with me? Increased afterload. Tell me about that murmur. Where is it, where is it located? Where would you hear it? Second intercostal space. Point to it, please. A right parasternal. Where else might you hear it? That murmur then may radiate. Murmur, not the blood, will radiate up into carotid. Is that clear? Increased pressure. Hmm. So what are we going to do with all this? We're going to take, take a look at physiology. And with physio, it's important that you take a look at the, um, take a look at the uh, cardiac cycle. It's important that we then compare this to the pressure volume loop. Is this important? Oh, my goodness, yes. And you know as well as I do as to how often that is asked on every single level of medical education. There are three main causes. Senile calcification. So who is this patient? Not 32. <laughs> a 32-year-old probably will not take kindly to the fact that he or she is going to be referred to as being senile. <laughs> Next. So senile would have to be someone who's uh, 70-some. Right? So as we get older, our tissues unfortunately do get tired, old, damaged, and may result in what kind of calcification? Senile dystrophic calcification. What's our topic? Aortic stenosis. That would be the most common cause, obviously. Can we prevent age from taking place? Not that I know of, unless you're Johnny Depp from Pirates of the Caribbean and he was looking for a fountain of youth you know, his entire life. Got old in the process, though. <laughs> Even he was not successful. Incidence increases with advancing age, obviously. What's happening? The aortic valve is becoming damaged. How many cusps does this patient have? Three. Clear? Three. It's just getting old. Damaged. Calcification, this is the 32-year-old that I've been referring to a couple of times now. Congenital bicuspid aortic valve. Now, what I do want you to pay attention to is don't just take a look at congenital and give it a generic name. What kind of congenital issue? Oh, maybe it's Down syndrome. Is that congenital? I believe so. What about Turner syndrome, XO? Could you have bicuspid? Of course, those are all congenital conditions. So any congenital anomaly might then also give rise to a bicuspid aortic valve. And now prone to what? Dystrophic calcification at what age? Young. And by young, we're talking 20s and 30s. Next. What else? In developing countries, not developed countries, in developing countries, the most common cause of aortic stenosis would be rheumatic heart disease. Is that clear? Now, what do you want to do with rheumatic heart disease? Be careful. <laughs> and the reason I say that is number one. A couple ways in which a patient may develop this, and we'll talk about this in greater detail, and obviously hit upon this in microbiology. And uh, you have a child that might have uh, pharyngitis, and that pharyngitis was caused by group A streptococci, streptococci pyogenes. 
and the pharyngitis was not properly treated and two to four weeks later ended up developing issues in the heart. All right, so we have rheumatic fever. Part of this might have been endocarditis, right? Or maybe it was impetigo. Impetigo, well, it could be caused by staph, but in this case, streptococcal pyogenes and may, uh, uh, may give rise to heart, not so much. All right, we'll talk about that more being with post-streptococcal, but at this point, what I want to firmly or plant a seed in your head is the fact that streptococcal infections do not only limit it to pharyngitis, could also involve the skin, but each one of those will be uh, giving rise to different types of diseases. So here we go. With rheumatic heart disease, if it's early on and damage to the valve, listen to what I'm saying, early is the operative word, then it would be a regurgitative issue. What's my topic? Stenosis. What do you think stenosis might mean in a rheumatic heart disease patient? You just cause damage. At some point in time, don't you think the repair process is kicking in? Of course it is. What does the repair process mean to you? Collagen coming in, deposition of fibrosis. So what does fibrosis mean to you? Hardening. Is that clear? Do not memorize this. So when you talk about rheumatic heart disease, 95% of your patients will have issues with the left-sided heart valves. Dr. Raj, what about the right side? Of course, the right side could be involved with a measly 5%. So do you want to spend time on things that are uncommon? Why would you want to do that? Why would you want to make your life more difficult? So 95% of the time, it would be the left side. On the left side, it would be aortic and mitral, right? So those are the valves that would be affected. Early on, it would be regurg. Our topic here is stenosis. Where is your patient coming from? Developing countries. What if it was a developed country? congenital bicuspid or older 70 some what kind see now are you are you putting things together are you creating differentials based on the history and demographics of your patient here with uh, calcification nice little cartoon to then different differentiate between our normal and then you find calcification how many cusps do you see here one two three so it was normal and how old was this patient with uh, presenting with aortic stenosis and dystrophic calcification? Old. Has to be. See now. Three cusps. What if you only find two cusps? Then it would be a young patient, guaranteed. Is that clear? Here we only have two cusps. You see them? This is the aortic valve. This is not the bicuspid. That's the problem. And so therefore, at the age of 30-some, ends up developing dystrophic calcification, aortic stenosis, and uh, let's go one step further. How's that left ventricle going to respond, please? Hypertrophy. Remember left ventricles lifting weights. And what are the weights? The aortic stenosis. What are they going to do? Undergoes hypertrophy. What kind? Concentric hypertrophy. Let's go one step further. Really? Mm -hmm. uh, if that left ventricle wall becomes thick and thick and thickened, conceptualize this. What's the size of the chamber? What's the size of the chamber, please? Reduced. When you have reduced size of the chamber because of increased thickness of the left ventricle wall, you cannot accommodate for more blood to come in. Is that a diastolic or systolic dysfunction? It's a diastolic dysfunction. In fact, clinically speaking, there's something called heart failure with preservation of your ejection fraction. HF, heart failure, preservation, P, E, F, ejection fraction. So you can actually have heart failure with aortic stenosis early on. Ejection fraction is normal. It still will be around 55%. Is that clear? We'll talk more about that later. We've discussed that in physio, but it's important that you bring it into play now. <laughs> 